The Metropolitan Opera in New York is one of the world's grand stages. Regal, legendary, prestigious. But in recent years, the Met has faced its share of struggles, most notably a scandal involving its since-fired music director. The group fired James Levine after a sexual misconduct investigation. The Met required a new direction. Enter Yannick nizé sigue a Montreal-born star of the classical music world. The 43-year-old Canadian maestro is considered a music visionary. He was primed to take the role in 2020, but with the need for fresh leadership, <laughs> he was thrust into the job of a lifetime two years earlier than expected. Becoming just the third music director in the Met's illustrious history. He's known for his energy, exuberance, and connection to his orchestra. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Welcome us to your new home. Yes. I met up with him in New York. Nice to meet you, finally. Yes. <laughs> I've read and heard a lot about you. You're sort of a, I don't, you're a phenomenon. Oh. I don't know. I, I, I have a pretty interesting life. You do. And uh, it's true that I'm one of those people who can really say that I'm living my dream. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, I'm lucky. Watching you is quite fascinating. I mean, I've watched some videos, but it's different to see you in person. The way you are, it's not just a guy waving a, a stick. <laughs> it's, you, you are sort of... Your body is taken over by it. Lots of emotion. What, yeah. What's happening inside yeah. here when you're doing that? So the philosophy for me is that I should, as a conductor, um, express the music with every way possible. The stick and the hands is, of course, the most common way or maybe the clearest way. Mm -hmm. But the emotion has have to come from the face, from the mouth, the whole body. I'm, uh, some people would say, diminutive st stature. <laughs> so I have to also uh, take more space. Yes. I never restrain myself to a place where I, I say, oh, you need to hold back. I'm less animated than I was 10 years ago, but that's just experience mm -hmm. and trust and, and self-confidence and maturity. Mm. Maybe some people think that we take our stick and we look uh, in the mirror and we try uh, if it looks good or clear and it never should happen. It should be just the mind. Well, that's what you look like when you were 10 on that video that everyone has seen. It does look like you were pretending to be a con yeah. what you thought a conductor was. Don't you think I didn't change? I, when I look at this, I say, hey, I'm doing the same you thing. The facial now. expressions are very similar. <laughs> you said once that it, that this job was almost too big for one person. Yeah, I Do mean. Do you still think that now that you're sort of in the midst of it? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's too late now, anyway. Exactly. I want to make it work. No, it's it's just, it is the the Met is the largest performing arts organization in the world. Yes. So this is like, just thinking about this is a bit <gasps> So at the end of the day, the conductor is the only constant presence which has to make it happen together mm -hmm. in the moment. Mm -hmm. And this is the way I see it and I conceive my job. And this is why maybe it's, I felt at some point this was maybe a, a, too much, but now I realize that this is also plays into my strengths, let's yes. put it this way, because I, the, the thing I like the most about my profession of conductor is to bring people together mm -hmm. and make them give their best. So, so there was a, a, an interesting moment today when I was here for the rehearsal uh, where you, you had 10 minutes left and you stopped and you said to the, the pit, listen, I have this crazy idea, I want to bring you all up on stage. And I watched you, but I also watched them and they all sort of went, what? <laughs> Is this guy crazy? <laughs> That's unusual, clearly, because of their reaction. What does that tell us about the kind of hmm. person you are, that you want to do that? 
I think there's such a collective effort in this that it's my role to feature that aspect of the teamwork even more, especially from the orchestra. And this orchestra, I consider it the best opera orchestra in the world. And I want them to feel that they are really part. Mm. And I had people crying after this, coming to me saying, I'm s we're so moved that you think oh. of doing this for us. And this is a um, learning process, I think, of my leadership, yes. but also their, the way that they feel that they can take their own place within a huge organization like the Met is. Well, you also have said that there had been a culture of you don't say anything to the maestro. You don't question him. Mm -hmm. He's in charge, which it seems a very dated uh, yes. way of doing business, but yes. obviously was still around. <laughs> so when you told yeah. people, yes, you can call me maestro, that's okay, but this is a collaboration. Yeah. Has there been pushback in any of the places where, where so you've been? There would never was any pushback. I have to respect, though, that you can't have the people change a culture overnight. Mm -hmm. And, you know, being collaborative doesn't mean uh, not being clear in what we request. Um, if you had been to the rehearsal yesterday, you would have seen maybe a sharper version of me where I needed to be much more assertive about, hey, I heard about it from some of the floor hands, actually. <laughs> no, I'm serious. And they no, said it was the first time they had heard you be a little sharp. Yeah. But they actually respected it. Yeah. You know, one has to still be in charge, yeah. but in charge respectfully. Do you feel a pressure in this position that is sort of apart from just the title? There are financial uh, issues uh, at the Metropolitan. I wouldn't say, you know, young people are rushing for opera tickets. Um, there is the issue around the, the previous conductor and sort of how do you redefine things after that, regardless of how it ends. There's a bit of a redemption story for the opera house there too. Do you feel that pressure? I'm certainly not oblivious to that pressure. <laughs> but here with the Met, it's a question of, yes, um, uh, healing process somehow with certain traumatic yes. experiences yes. but it's also a question of relevance I think is there is more the connection yes the connection of the house with every inhabitant of New York it's also the way we welcome young people or regardless of age just people from certain communities or people who feel that it's not for them. Yeah, it's the not way, accessible. Right, right, and it's it's not true in a way. It's People can go to the opera without knowing a, a, a word from the story. The Met is working hard to open doors to new audiences, from commissioning operas written by women to bringing opera into the classroom. The question now, can opera become cool for a new generation? I think <laughs> opera is cool. I think it can become cooler. It can be <laughs> hip. And the way to do it yes. is interesting. I think making it known, making it accessible, in cer and when I say accessible, is more people feeling welcome. Yes. But never, never, ever dumbing it down. You know, just that is how it's going to stay and become more hip. What should Canadians that are watching, who may, you might, might get to New York, might get a chance to see you here, maybe not. What should they make of you, sort of taking the world over? I wouldn't be here if it were not because of who I am as a Canadian and the deep values we have. I think this way of approaching people with a lot of um, open mind to everyone else's opinion and input, but mm. also the need for creativity, the need and the encouragement when you grew up in Montreal, as I did. And if you're different at 22 and you want to do Beethoven a different way and Verdi a different way, it is not discouraged, it's encouraged. You ever get tired? As everyone. <laughs> no, I don't think you do. <laughs> I do have an energy level yeah. above the average. <laughs> Let's put it this way. It's you got a little Energizer Bunny thing going on. Yeah. <laughs> Energizer Bunny, that's me. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks.